Aloha. Welcome to Talk Story with John Waihei. I have an exciting guest for you. He is a visiting professor at the Richardson School of Law. He actually teaches, um, I guess, Hawaiian legal Hawaiian history. And, uh, and so he knows about how we got to the mess that we're now in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but uh, more importantly, um, he is also being the host of a panel uh, this coming Thursday, which will discuss uh, threats to the independence of our judiciary. So this is Troy Andrade. Uh, I'd like to welcome Troy. Oh, I should Thank also mention me. that you also do some legal work with the... Uh, McCorriston law yeah. firm, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, tell Bill McCorriston he owes me one just for that. <laughs> I will tell right? him that. Or at least he owes a contribution to Think Thick Hawaii. <laughs> well, anyway, Troy, welcome. Thank you All for right? having me. You know, and I, I, and I wanted to begin uh, sort of off the wall at first, but uh, in the sense that, you know, it's really interesting to me that you're teaching um, Hawaiian legal history. At the at the univers at the Richardson School of Law, I knew your grandfather. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, he was uh, he was a Hawaiian uh, hero actually in terms of the Hawaiian uh, rights movement and the sovereignty movement and and all of it. Uh, Pai Galdera. In fact, Pai. For those people who want a little history lesson <laughs> here, Pai was the leader of the a group called the Hawaiians. Mm -hmm. And uh, that started sometime around 19, in the 1970s. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I joined. I was a member sitting in the back of the meetings, you know. And what's significant about Pi was the fact that the Hawaiians were the first group to actually take direct action on a strictly Hawaiian issue in the history of Hawaii. They, they were the first. And that was when they uh, occupied Parker Ranch uh, on the Big Island. Yeah, uh, with they Sonny occupied Kanihu. with Sonny Kanihu and the rest of it. Your grandfather was the leader. Yeah. And so now you get to talk about him. You get to teach about him. You get to show how we went from Pai Galdera to others and eventually uh, to the Kan Kan and to uh, today, right? Yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a great position to be in uh, at the law school. I'm very thankful. And, um, you know, it's funny because I never, my grandpa never told us any of those stories growing up. And it wasn't until I was in college that I started to learn about it. And when I talked to him and asked him, is this you? You know, I see all this stuff about <laughs> Pai Galdera. Is this you? And he started crying and he told us, yeah, that was... That's me. And he started telling us all these stories about meeting with Governor Burns all the time. And I was thinking, no, this yeah, couldn't be the yeah. guy. And then I go to the archives, talk to you, and it's all true. <laughs> it's all true. And we're in the back, so you get to talk about it. And, yeah, and I get to talk about him and uh, teach about what they did on the Big Island and how that affected the 78 Concon. Yeah, the and creation of OHA. You, you wrote a, your not only do you have a law degree, you also have a doctorate. You wrote your dissertation on the creation of OHA, I guess. Or, or yeah, so, so my dissertation covers the, the spectrum. It starts from the cultural, political renaissance in the 60s and 70s, which led to the Con Con, and then goes all the way through all the ups and downs, turbulences. So, so tell OHA. me, so tell me, do you understand how OHA actually works now? <laughs> I have a pretty good understanding of how it works, but um, I don't think anyone really knows exactly how OHA works. Well, you think we ought to save that for a That's a new panel, I think. Yeah, that's a new discussion. Well, today's topic is the threat to judicial independence. Now, what's that all about? I mean, what is, when people say there's a threat to judicial independence, what are they, what are they saying? What does it mean? So within the past few years, there's been an attempt by the state legislature to try to take authority back from the, the, the state judiciary. So a lot of commentators, um, scholars believe that it was the, the attempts by the state legislature to claw back on judicial uh, appointments, judicial retention, 
um, results from decisions about particularly Native Hawaiian issues that the courts have made within the past few years. Um, so in terms of what the legislature has been doing, last year they introduced um, various measures, one of which was to have judicial elections be a part of but, but there are, our, our system. Uh, there are judges elected all over the country, aren't there? For sure, right. And, and, and I think the, the, the threat to Hawaii is that that would influence, um, that could allow politics to get involved. In you mean like you're having judges standing on the highway waving signs? For sure, that's exactly what would happen. And that's what happens uh, in, in a lot of states across the country is that you have judges actively soliciting donations well, to run for campaign. Le le let me ask you a question. Uh, but to get this, to get this into context, they, you know, we have uh, uh, in the American system of democracy, right, there are three branches of government, supposedly co-equal, right. Right? right? The legislature, the executive, and the judiciary. Now, if these branches are co-equal, how can one branch uh, threaten another? Well, I think it goes back to your, you know, high school intermediate social studies class and what All you right. learn in civics about separation of powers, but more importantly about checks and balances. Okay. So you have different roles for each of the, the, the branches of government. And for the legislature and the, and the executive right now, their role in the judicial process is to um, appoint someone. The governor gets to appoint someone from a list that's sent to him or right. her by the Judicial Selection Commission. And so you've got a commission Senate. that uh, s looks for nominees. Correct. And what's, the, and what's the importance of this commission? So the commission sort of serves as an independent, nonpartisan body that collects applications for um, judicial appointments. Right. So the commission itself is made up of nine members. The nine members are appointed, two from the governor, two from the state uh, senate president, two from the, the house speaker, one from the chief justice, and two from the Hawaii State Bar Association. So that commission is made up of mostly community members. And by law, you actually have to have no more than four attorneys on that nine-member commission. So, so, so we, the majority of the people on the commission are everyday citizens. The majority of the people on the commission are everyday citizens. With credentials, obviously. For because, sure, for sure. You know, you're not going to put... And, uh, a ma and a majority of the, the members on the commission are actually appointed by the political parties. But the so political there is parties. a way to... There is a kind of a con accountability in the sense that the, poli the political parties who are elected have a hand in putting together this commission which subsequently appoints the judges. Correct. So they and have so that's six some of the nine. checks and balances. Yeah, they have two thirds of the right. of that commission belongs to the the political right. branches of government. And then so when they pass back uh, the nominees, the governor, I suppose, uh, I, I know, gets to choose who out of the out one. of the list that they create, which is what, what six 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 nominees. Usually six to ten, yeah. and then the governor would select. Um, would, a, would nominate someone, and then that nominee would then go through a confirmation process with the state senate. And it seems to be working rather well. I, I know that, that that process that you just described was uh, established in the 1970 Constitutional Convention. So th that convention wasn't only about OHA; it was about judicial uh, independence. For sure. And as one well. thing to one thing, and you know this about the convention is that it was really the people's convention. I mean, that was the, right. the time where grassroot organizers got back involved in politics and decided to make a change, I think for the better, in terms of creating all these well, different checks. People should know that prior to the, the formation of the commission, the governor uh, chose whoever he wanted. I mean, he just did it. So now we have this, uh, I guess, a merit system. Yeah, and, and this merit system is actually known across the country as sort of the gold standard for selection systems. Okay, so what happens? The governor now appoints somebody, it uh, goes before the state senate. Uh, to, like to the state judiciary, senate judiciary committee. So they sort of do the investigation and uh, make their recommendation to then go so to the, the full the, senate. So the legislative branch has another crack at it in terms of the um, ratification process. For sure, yes. Right. 
Yeah. But uh, now with, um, and that's for circuit court judges and Supreme Court judges and Court of Appeal judges. Right. Uh, as now, well as for the um, district court judges. Oh, they also confirm so the district court. the chief justice, court. well, so, so instead of the governor making the appointments for district court judges, it's the chief justice. And that they still have to go through Senate. So this system is set up. Seems to me like there's pretty good balancing uh, uh, and involvement because before a judge becomes a judge, he will have been screened by the executive branch. Uh, reviewed int uh, intensely by the uh, legislative branch, and now I'm a judge. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I get appointed for uh, ten-year term for right. justices and and what court judges. and the issue is during this time of my appointment, am I free to make what I think are the right decisions regarding the law? Right? Isn't that what this all comes back to? Yeah, so it, it's all about the retention process, this legislative session. So there's a, a bill currently moving through the process, Senate Bill 673, which attempts to take the retention process away from the Judicial Selection Commission and put it in the hands of the state Senate. So, well, oh, yeah, normally. Well, so, what happens normally? Normally, how, right now, how are people retained? So, right now, there's a six month time frame before your term ends that you would right. have to petition for um, retention. You would petition the Judicial Selection Commission, so that same commission that would have appointed you 10 years earlier with, of course, a different composition of people. Um, they would get the, the say as to, you know, you'd file your petition with them. They would solicit public comments. They'd publish um, your retention notice in newspapers so the public would get a chance to comment. They would get confidential information, evaluations from attorneys and jurors that appeared before that judge to ensure um, that all the information about the judge is presented in a way that is confidential. So, in, so what happens is, uh, right now, the selection no longer involves the political branches, so to speak. You know, what it does is it's, it's, it's a decision on the merit. And uh, the merits being, did this person have the qualities to be a good judge? What does his peers think or her peers think of her? Correct. Uh, what was the timeliness of their decision making? How were their decisions viewed on appeal by other courts if they were overturned all the time or um, if they were affirmed all the time? So it, it's a process in which the Judicial Selection Commission gets all this really valuable information and they really make their decision based on the merits. So what is the change? So the change that the, the legislature is, is pushing now is to, to remove, well, to leave the Judicial Selection Commission to give their recommendation, but that recommendation would have to go before the state Senate for final approval. Which so, so that's for retentions? Correct. So what this would add is that they would retain the uh, the ability to go and uh, uh, I guess r ratify somebody again. Correct. So, Correct. And um, okay, so this is the change that we're for. Now, when we get back, we're going to have a little word from our sponsors or somebody <laughs> out there. You know, just flies in <laughs> these and these things. But um, we're, we're going to come back, and we and we need to understand how that change is a threat to judicial independence and, as you indicated early on, how that threat to judicial independence may involve, may in fact be a threat to the uh, fairness or the functioning of the uh, judiciary uh, in, in the system. So. Well, we'll be right back. I can't wait to tie all of this down in a neat package and show why uh, it's important for us to maintain the independence of our judiciary. Aloha, this is Kelee Akina with the weekly Ehana Kako. Let's work together program on the Think Tech Hawaii broadcast network, Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. Movers and shakers and great ideas. Join us. We'll see you then. Aloha. I've got the Beagle Sisters here with a healthy tip. We encourage you to enjoy the food you eat this holiday season and keep it local and healthy. Yeah. Eat the rainbow. Eat yeah. the rainbow. And if you need any produce, come to the Red Barn on the North Shore. Aloha. My name is Richard Emery, host of Condo Insider. More than a third of Hawaii's population live in some form of association 
And our show is all about educating board members and owners about their responsibilities and obligations and providing solutions for a great association. You can watch me live on Thursdays, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. each week. Aloha. Welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe. By the way, if you want to call in and ask a question of our distinguished guest, uh, Troy Andrade, <laughs> this afternoon, the phone, the phone number is 415-871-2474. And I think there's a way to tweet us, too. Uh, it's something about uh, at Think Tech Hawaii. At Tic Tac. So, Donald Trump, Mr. Oh, President, no. if you are <laughs> watching this by some stretch of the imagination and you want to learn a little bit about what judicial independence uh, is and how important it is to our system, you might want to tweet in and ask this uh, professor, Try Andrade, why this is an important issue. So, meanwhile, welcome back, Try. Thank we're, you. We're back up. Okay, so now the legislature is trying to, I guess it has to be a constitutional amendment. Correct. Right? So they're introducing a constitutional amendment which would change the system of appointment. What's so insidious about that? Well, I think one thing that, it's, it's, that makes it really problematic is the idea that the Senate, a, a political branch, would have the final say in But don't in they do that in the beginning? They do, they do. But the, the issue is that on retention, you have judges making decisions throughout their term. And what it does is it infuses this political um, aspect to it in which a judge so if you may don't or may like, not. If, I don't li if I'm a state senator, and I don't like the decision that the judge came up with because I, for whatever reason, disagree with it. Yeah. Then by having the power of confirmation like I, uh, like I, I do, then I, I, I can actually threaten that judge. That's absolutely correct. And, I mean, one example of that happened last year, 2015 to 2016, in, in the the Nelson case, which is a big case filed um, by Native Hawaiian plaintiffs against the state of Hawaii and the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. And essentially, the Hawaii Supreme Court said they're going to throw it back to the circuit court to decide what is substantial fees in order right. to, to compensate. Well, what, maybe just for our listeners, what that case was about was that there's another constitutional amendment in the Hawaii State Constitution. There's another provision that requires that the state fund Hawaiian homes at least adequately enough to, con for, to cover its administrative duties. Now, uh, for most of the time, that has not happened. Uh, in fact, I, I don't know when it happened. For last. sure, from the days of my grandfather. <laughs> yeah, you know, so those things are, and, and, but it's a requirement. It's a legal requirement. So this, um, the legislature and the executive branch were actually uh, in violation, and the court called them out on it. Is that what you said? For sure, yeah. So yeah. the court called them out on it, and um, a judge who was appointed by Governor Lingle and who received unanimous confirmation from the Senate um, put out a sum that she believed the legislature and the governor needed to, needed to uh, fund for the Department of Hawaiian Homelands, and that created a huge uproar in the state in the state legislature. And this, I think, is what led to... To the idea that they wanted to confirm judges. Again, Correct. So it's kind of a little clumsy. I mean, right. just on the level, before we even get to the threat to uh, Hawaiian, uh, Hawaiian issues right now, so what we find is we find one branch of government trying to usurp or curtail the powers of another branch of government. Now, how does that work? I mean, I thought we had a tripartite system where everything ought to be balanced. We do, and that's what both the federal and state constitutions provide, is this balance between the three branches of government. And what the legislature is doing here is taking power away from the, the 
but, the but, but it's but it's but it's not direct though. It, I mean, it's not saying that you in, as judges can't decide the issue. What it's really doing is it's very subtle. It's saying that you could lose your job if you don't decide the issue the way I think you ought to. Right, which is, which I think is sort of the same thing. Well, I think it's worse. <laughs> no, I mean, I think it's yeah. worse. I think it's, 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 it, there is a kind of a, a, a tradition of freedom of speech. I mean, if I don't like what a judge says, I, I can say, uh, you know, I don't like it. And, mm -hmm. I, and, and, you know, and you and I, uh, well, you're a graduate of the University of Hawaii Law School? Yep. Well, you and I, as fellow graduates, know that for every issue, legal issue, there's probably two sides to it, may, at, at least, right? For Otherwise, sure. as our profession, we would starve. <laughs> right. You know? Okay, so there are at least two sides. So I can say, if I don't like the judge's uh, opinion, I'll, I'm going to appeal it, I don't like it, do whatever you want. Or you could change the laws regarding change that law. particular issue. But, yeah, except that that's what they might be trying to do, but not in the right way. What I they're agree. doing here is it's not, it's, uh, it's not me vocalizing, expressing freedom of speech. It's m my attempt to bully uh, a judge. Yeah. You know? And so, okay, so that's the implication. That's what we're talking about when we say there's a threat to our judiciary. Now, how does that uh, affect Hawaiian issues? So back to the, the Nelson case, what happened after the judge said, here's a certain amount, $28 million, I think it was, Hello? That the legislature needs Hello? to pay. Hello, do we have a phone call Hello? here? Oh, great. Yeah. Oh, we got a call? We got a call. You got oh. a question. Okay, but first, uh, I want to be really clear that after the Nelson case, this is when this uh, originated, this threat. So, okay, what's our question? Welcome to Talk Story with John Y. Hey, we got an exciting young guest, a professor from the University of, visiting professor <laughs> from the University of Hawaii uh, Law School called the Scr Richardson School of Law. Question, please. Awesome. Uh, it's awesome to see young Hawaiians involved. Um, my question is, when can we expect a run for governor? When can we expect a run for governor? Try. When can we expect a run for governor? <laughs> I'm not running for governor. <laughs> I like the idea of staying at the law school. Well, I, I, let, me give you, let me give you some political advice. If you were thinking of running for governor, you would probably want to save that and announce it in a much, you know, in a form. But anyway, thank you so much for your comments, <laughs> and uh, we, we're going we're gonna to pick his brains, not at least here. So, okay, so this is the threat, right? Yeah, and it, it actually materialized, because what happened with Judge, Cast Judge Castagnetti is that the, the state filed a motion for reconsideration of that decision. And after that decision, she, she uh, uh, made a new decision that said, that didn't have a number associated with it. So, so it so essentially it, fell so to the political whims. See, and that's not good for people. Well, it's not good for Native Hawaiians. It's not good for all. I mean, the courts are supposed to be for minority. Right, right. Any minority. Anybody with a minority opinion. Right. The courts are, are, are that safeguard, right? They're the last safeguard for minority voices in the community. And, and that's the idea, isn't it? The idea of having this tripartite system of government was the idea that the majority ought to have their influence, but the rights of the minority, those who dissent, uh, need to be protected. protected. Yeah, yeah. Well, sure. you know what's interesting to me? Okay, I know we are focusing in on this uh, constitutional amendment, and that's very important. What a lot of people don't know is that constitutional amendments don't go to the governor, so they're not subject to a veto. See, so they're bypassed. The legislative branch is actually using a little bit of political trickery here. Yeah. In, in, in a sense. Now, I, I do know that's the only way they could do this, but it is, it, it is the one thing that they could do that would bypass at least the executive branch. Now, I've been told, though, that this is not the only threat. In fact, there's other insidious threats that are coming out. There, there was some bill that was going to modify or change the uh, retirement system. Retirement for judges. system. I'm not too familiar with that one, but um, I know last year there was they didn't approve any of the judiciary supplemental budget. Um, 
So there's been so there is attacks. this contentiousness yeah. going on. And we, the, uh, uh, the University of, uh, the Richardson School of Law is going to be holding a panel discussion um, on... On Thursday at... Uh, that's Thursday, that's March 3rd. Second. 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 At uh, 1145 at the law school. At 1145, the and it's going to be in the moot court room. Yep. It's the, the subject matter is going to be this subject matter. Who are your panelists? So our panelists, of course, is going to be <laughs> Governor Waihei to give his thoughts. Um, we have retired uh, Hawaii Supreme Court Justice uh, Steve Levinson, um, who was very influential in the 90s in being a justice and protecting the rights of minorities, uh, which has had national, international implications to today. Yeah, this um, is not only about Hawaiians. This is about sure. anybody with a dissenting point of view. For right? sure, for sure. And then our, our final panelist is, is Calvin Young, who's an attorney at Goodsill now. Um, who was a former bar president, but has um, been very active and vocal about the importance of judicial independence. So we covered the, the so I'm going to encourage, uh, uh, we, you want to encourage anyone who would have an interest in this to come to the University of Hawaii uh, Richardson School of Law to attend this uh, panel discussion, take the opportunity to ask questions and, and deal with the issues about whether or not our judicial system is under a threat. Now, Having discussed Hawaii, I cannot pass up the fact that we got a president of the United States now that in some respects are acting even worse than our local judiciary. Yeah. I mean, the, you, you got a president who calls judges out. So-called judges. So-called right. judges mm -hmm. and, and the rest. And uh, you think that some of this just is reinforcing each other? I, I, I think it's a sad day when we, we have a presidency that expressly, openly attacks the judiciary. And then, not just the judiciary, but attacking a lot of minority perspectives. And when you have our, our state legislature, who, who's supposed to be supposed to be there to help us, right? Um, sort of t making these moves, it's it's a little. Well, concerning. it looks it looks it looks a little Trumpish, don't you think? Uh, you know, I mean, I I don't, don't want to call my fellow uh, you know uh, politicians who I love and respect. They're all sitting on the hill up there, but they're <laughs> acting a little Trumpish. Uh, but anyway, for those of our of all of us that want to hear more about the threat to our judiciary this coming Thursday, March 2nd, at 1145 at the Richardson School of Law. We're going to have a discussion on this issue, and we are inviting the public to attend. Yep. So, thank you so much for uh, coming by. Glad to be here. And uh, joining us and pointing out uh, what's happening in our uh, in our legislative and the judicial system and the executive branch. Thank you.